Okay. Uh, you know, we have a great lineup tonight, as always. Great to see all of you. First, we'd like to, if you've come in in the past couple of days, uh, would you stand? We'd like to see you. Uh, if you've come in from the field. Great to have you with us. Great to have you in our living room here. And uh, we have, uh, we're going to go, we're going to we're hear from Pastor Luigi Palmieri first tonight. And uh, comes to us from Benin, Africa. I think we have, oh, wrong one. There you go. From Benin, Africa. Would you welcome him? Good evening. Uh, you have greetings from uh, uh, Benin. The president and his government say hello to you. <laughs> I thought you you were going to tr to trust me, but no. Uh, Okay, we just arrived, my wife and I, some days ago, uh, and uh, we are very thankful to God to, to be able to, ma to make it this year also. Thank you for the church, Pastor Shara, Pastor Shibeli, and all those who are so concerned by the mission and the missionaries also. So here we are, and uh, we thank God for that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, I just want to read one, one verse in English. <laughs> be ready because I'm going to be very serious. Now, in Psalm uh, 27, the verse 13. Uh, I don't know why I have some problem with English and especially with the King James Version. But it's okay. David says something uh, I love very much and I think it's very important for us to, to just to rely to what, what he said. He said, I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. In, Fr in the French version, it's a little bit different, and I like, I like it a little bit more. Uh, hey, I, I want to say something, by the way. Have you, have you noticed that sometimes we preach in one language, we use one Bible, and you try to find the verse, and you don't find the verse in your Bible? Have you, have you noticed that? Or it's not exactly the same, but the message is very great. But after that, if you want to repeat it in French, it's impossible because you cannot show the verse in the Bible. So it's why I have to read in English to be sure that everything will be okay. <laughs> because you didn't trust me for the president, I'm sure you will not trust me for the, the Bible also. <laughs> I know you for long, <laughs> a long time. Anyway, in French it goes, it goes like this. Uh, I, am, I am doing a, a direct translation. He said, oh, if I was not sure of the goodness of God uh, in, in, in the land of the, the living, oh, if I was not sure. And I love it. You know, uh, in this particular passage, uh, David goes uh, through many troubles. He speaks about enemies, troubles, difficulties. And uh, it, come, it, it, came, uh, it comes to the conclusion, uh, and the con conclusion is just a little sentence, oh, if I was not sure of the goodness of God 
in the land of the living. And reading that and uh, thinking about that, I, I came to the conclusion to myself that yeah, life, the Christian life is not so complicated when we allow when we allow God to reduce it to just one little sentence. Oh, if I was not sure. And what would happen if I was not sure? Many things. We have to be persuaded. Sometimes I can, especially where I am, because I live in Africa, I live in Benin, so most of the time I talk with Beninese people, African people, and uh, I, I wonder if they understand what is faith. They have faith for great things. If you, if you speak about billions, they have faith. If you speak about one dollar, they don't have faith. It's difficult for them to have faith for one dollar, but they will say that they have faith for a billion dollar. And faith uh, is like David saying here, just, just uh, thinking in itself and saying, wow, well, what, is the, what is the most important thing for my life? Is it my strength? Is it my simple knowledge? Is it my position? What, what is it the most important thing in my life? Oh, if I was not sure of the goodness of God in the land of the living. Oh, if I was not sure. But I am sure. I am sure. And now he's, he's talking to himself. He said, hey, wait on the Lord. Be of good courage and he shall strengthen uh, your heart, wait, I say, on the Lord. When we, when we are persuaded of what the Lord is, now we can talk to ourselves. We don't need anyone. We need, we need the body, but sometimes we are just alone, and we, we need to, this ability to talk to, your, to ourselves. And say, and say good things to us, to ourselves. So because he was persuaded of the goodness of God, he was able to talk to, to himself, to encourage himself, and say, hey, be of good courage. Wait on the Lord. It's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. Why? Because I know and I am sure of the goodness of God. Just that, it's sufficient for my life. And we can put other names, you know, other words. Oh, if I was not sure of the grace of God for my life. Because goodness here is not the same that in many, many passages, you know, yes, said, is not the same, the same word. Here is just the, the goods of God, good things, honesty. Uh, if I was not sure of the honesty of God, if I, if, I, if I was not sure that everything can work for my good, you know what? If I was not sure of the goodness of God, I would not be a missionary, honestly. Not even a pastor. Not even a father or an husband. I would not. I said to myself when I was a young, um, 16, 17, I said, I will never have a family. I will never marry anyone, and I will never have a family. Never. Why? Because I was looking around me, and especially my own family, my parents and my my relatives, and honestly, I didn't see any goodness, any grace, any mercy, any anything, nothing. But by the grace of God, we, we can come to the conclusion that many things become possible just because of the goodness of God. Just, just that. 
There's a verse in Isaiah, Isaiah 26, 12. The translation in, from French to English, because French is becoming the, the main language in the world. I don't know if you noticed that. <laughs> Since I arrived in Baltimore, this is now the, the, the thing. <laughs> no. But the, the verse said in French, it says like this. Uh, you give us grace because everything we do, you accomplish it. We have peace because what we do, you are the one who accomplish it. We, we, are, we are not called to accomplish anything. We are called to work with God. And we have peace. Why we, we have peace? Because we know and we are persuaded that what is started in us, it will finish it. It will accomplish it. And Paul said that to the Philippians. He said, I am persuaded. I am persuaded. David said to some uh, 35, he said, your goodness make me, makes me great. But great for what? Great for to love someone. Great to give grace, great to give mercy, great to, to just show Christ to others. And if I was not sure of the goodness and the grace and the mercy and the, everything we need, honestly, I, I don't know. Have you ever uh, asked a question to yourself? It happened to me sometimes. What if uh, I had never gave my life to Christ? You know, simple question. We are very curious. I would like to know. What would have happened to me if I would not have given my life to Christ? Honestly, I don't know. I don't know. But here, is a little bit different. David is thinking in itself. It's not a question, but it's something he has to settle in his mind in order to be strong, in order to, to make good choices, in order to, to, uh, to be able to go forth, to talk to himself, to encourage himself. Oh, if I was not sure of the goodness of God in the land of the living. Wow, if I was not sure, I would be dead. I would be discouraged. I, I, I would quit. I would, I don't, run away. I would not be here now. And I'm not talking about me, but David would have said that. But he went through so many things just because of the goodness of God. That's all. That's all. We know that, that the goodness in general is more than just good things, honesty and this. It's, a, it's something so great, so amazing. So amazing. Not because of us, but because of you, Lord. Do something just because of you. Not, not us, because of you. So, I would like to be persuaded more and more uh, about the goodness, the grace, the mercy of God, the gen gentleness of God towards me. I know, but I would like to be more and more persuaded. Why? Because like this I can talk to myself and I can stand and glorify God in the midst of many, many troubles that maybe will come in my life. So God bless you, and be sure of the goodness of God for your life.
Uh, uh, we, the next speaker is uh, our, our uh, former choir director, Pastor Arto. <laughs> and also uh, colleague, pastor, uh, servant. He moved to Finland with his, uh, he is Finnish, and he moved to Finland with his family. Uh, Mia and he are here uh, for the conference, and uh, we just uh, will hear from him during the next couple weeks. And uh, we just are really, he's doing a great job over in Finland. We're very happy about that, and we just want to welcome him tonight to share with us. Thank you. It is a great thing to be here, seeing everybody, and we we really been missing you, and it's a, it's a great gift. Thank you for all your prayers, all your gifts, all your love, and just all all those years that we were in the plan of God here. It's it's something that never fades away. And and uh, my wife, who couldn't be here this this time, uh, she sent greetings to everybody. And she really misses you all also. In Genesis uh, 1, uh, God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light, and it was good. And we have darkness there. We have the first day. Uh, 2 Corinthians 4, 6, For it is the God who commanded light to shine out of darkness, who has shone in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Ephesians 5, 8. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. The same God who said, let there be light, said, let there be children of light. We are the ones who see the light, and we see things through the light. People who are in darkness, they don't see the things that we see. And some of the most precious things that we see are those opportunities. Those opportunities, those moments, moments of opportunity, those kairos moments. We are not stumbling in the darkness, but God is opening our eyes to see those moments. Those days in the Genesis, they, those were the good days. But Ephesians 5, 15 uh, says that see then... See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. The days are evil. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the, what the will of the Lord is. The same thing says also Colossians 4, 5. Walk in wisdom toward those who are outside, redeeming the time. Redeeming what? Redeeming those amazing moments of opportunity. We walk in the light and see the divine opportunity, and we redeem it. We seize the moment in the evil time and redeem that moment to eternity. Souls, prayer, healing, hearing God, building up others, comforting, whatever it is, we are redeeming those moments that come in our way. Those people who are not from the light, they don't see those things. And that's why also it is said, um, uh, say, say, Paul says in Romans 13, that knowing the time, knowing this moment of opportunity, that now is the high time to awake out of sleep. The night is far spent and the day is at hand. The time is evil. These days are evil. Somebody might ask us that, why do you forsake all those good things that you could have in this life? Why do you keep doing that church thing? Why do you keep doing that church thing? We are children of light. We see something that the other people don't see. You remember the three laws or like three determinants of the value of real, real estate, what is it? Location, location, and location, right? And, okay, let me tell you what are the three determinants of the value of your heavenly estate. That is opportunity, 
Opportunity, opportunity. God gives us opportunities that are those moments, precious moments of opportunity that we can redeem out of this evil time and bring with us to eternity. There are people, there are people, there are souls, there are saints, there are broken hearts. Hmm, amazing. 1 Corinthians seven twenty nine, Paul says, But this I say, brethren, the moment of opportunity, meaning this time is short. So that from now on, even those who have wives should be as though they had none. Those who weep as though they didn't weep. Those who rejoice as though they didn't rejoice. Those who buy as though they did not possess. And those who use this world as not misusing it. For the worm of, form of this world is passing away. And, and I'm just thinking about that. What an opportunity we again have here this week, this convention week and this time. And I just have it very strongly in my heart that I want to use this opportunity. I want to hear him. I want to grow in him. I want to grow in love. I want to grow in unity. I want to grow in knowing people and knowing Christ in people. Somebody might come here and not see the moment of opportunity to get to know the Christ in somebody's life. We don't want to be like that. We are children of light. We see that moment of opportunity when it presents itself. And that is amazing. Our lives are amazing. Our lives are filled with something that God has been the sprinkling. Our, our days are sprinkled with these amazing Kairos opportunities. And I'm just very grateful for that. Lord, we just thank you for this opportunity to hear your word here tonight. And just really bless your church. Bless everyone who is here, those who are listening through the internet this coming week. And Lord, just help us not to miss those opportunities. Mm, thank you, Lord. Amen. Just simply uh, for the sake of uh, staying on that, that theme and uh, thinking about it, uh, opportunity, our next 10 days together as a body, all the people that we will see and the fellowship that we will have, what God can do amongst us, then just uh, take a minute and just, um, I'd like you to fellowship, just be refreshed in what you heard. I, I love what Pastor Luigi said that uh, I had fainted lest I had believed to see the goodness of God. And what he said was, I want to see the goodness of God more and more. And that, that word just resonated in my heart. And he, he said it so well. Uh, life can be tough, but then I can see the goodness of God. And I'm okay. Because I can see, I would have fainted, but then I, I saw, I don't want to re-preach it, but it's just <laughs> really awesome. And then uh, Pastor Arto's word, uh, the anointing is here. And I, I have a short message I want to share with you, but before I ask you to listen, I just want you to uh, either pray there for a moment or lean over and talk to your neighbor for a moment about what you just heard. Then I'll have you stand for a minute.
Okay, uh, it's Wednesday night. Oh, John Pastor Perkins is here with Ilico. That's great from Las Vegas. Awesome. All right, would you, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to notice something because it's Wednesday. Watch, okay. Would you stand with me, please? Yeah, just what I thought. It was like, ah, oh, ah, oh, ah. Oh. Yeah, it's okay. All right, so uh, let's listen for a few minutes, shall we? Turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 16. Read it out loud with me, please. Verse 16. Ready? Wherefore? Let's try it again. Wherefore? Hey, let's do it loudly. Wherefore, henceforth know we no man after the flesh. Yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now henceforth know we him no more. Okay, you may be seated. Uh, we have drawn a diagram like this in the past where we have God, and this is what I know of God. I think of God this way. My concept of God is not exactly accurate. What do you think? Is that true? How, why, why do you say that about me? Okay, but that is so possible that God exists and we are learning by the Holy Spirit and the comforting thing is that the Spirit is sent into the world to reveal to us. Christ said it also very clearly in Matthew eleven twenty seven. no one knows the Father but the Son. Then he said nobody knows the Son but the Father. So let's draw the Son of God this way. And how do you know him? Maybe you also know him differently from the way he really is. Uh, this is amazing because we understand this about life. How I could misunderstand God, I, I could misunderstand what God is saying, what God is doing. I could misunderstand Christ himself. Philip said, show us the Father. Christ said, have I been with you so long and you don't know that if you have seen me, you have seen the Father? Uh, then we have us, you and me, the people sitting here tonight, and it's possible in the same way that we could misunderstand each other. This verse says that there was a time when we knew Christ after the flesh, and what does that mean? Maybe how tall was he? What was the color of his hair? How many kilos or pounds did he weigh? And those kind of details about him as a man. But now we don't know him as merely a man in the flesh, but we know him as the Christ, God and man, and seated at the right hand of the Father. It is very important that the Holy Spirit would show us the Father, the Son, and each other. And in a few minutes, I just want to say that what I sense here in our fellowship is that we know each other not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. That's why convention means so much to us.
because when we come together, I want to know Pastor Luigi and Pastor Arto and everyone sitting in this auditorium in a certain way. It is not a fellowship. Here's another little sub point to share with you, and I don't want to throw a lot at you. But in the Bible, we have the word depth. We have the depth of God in Psalm 42. We have the depth of Satan uh, in uh, Revelation. And it's the end of chapter 2. And then we have the depth of man's heart in Psalm 64. The depths of God, that's the depths that I would like to know. But I really don't want to know the depths of man's heart in that sense of man and his heart and what is inside. We said it in the staff meeting, it's kind of like my wife and I, and my wife and I, and I could talk to her about what is really me here, deep inside. But I made a point in our staff meeting that actually my wife really isn't interested in what I'm talking about just now, about this part of me that is so deep and so complicated and if you get into it, you will also find what Proverbs 18 calls foolishness. I'll read it. We'll read it. I'll read it to you. A fool has no delight in understanding. Wow, this is amazing. But that his heart may discover itself. Wow. Let me repeat it. A fool has no delight in understanding. That would be on our, on our little sketch up here. That's this one. He doesn't delight in understanding the depths of God. That's what Pastor Luigi said. I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of God in the land of the living. But there is a fellowship where you find the depths of man. Have you ever been in one of those? I've been in a college dorm before I was saved, and we sat around high as a kite, talking about the meaning of life, what we really feel, what is really happening, who knows reality. And on and on it went, and I lasted about a year and a half in that, and then somebody preached the gospel, and I said, I'll take it. I'll take it. That's what I'm looking for. I want to know Christ. I didn't know the vocabulary, but I understood that I, I'm not really living here, like wanting to know what is really in you and who are you really. And in my marriage with my wife, I love it that we have found an increase, not in the depths of man and his corruption, his depravity, his flesh, his arrogance. How deep is arrogance? How deep is deception? How deep is Satan? Very deep. You may not never get out of it. You go on and on, and books are written, and analysis take place, and wounds are repeated and emphasized, and there's a whole fellowship. A man that turns out of the way of, the under, of understanding shall dwell in the congregation of the dead. It's dead. Why are we happy to come together this week? Because we are alive. Why are we happy that our fellowship isn't in our flesh, but it is like covered? It is who is between us. Christ is. Tell me about Jesus. Listen to this one. Here's another little point. Balaam 
Yeah, this is in uh, Numbers chapter 23, verse 18 to 24, I believe. Balaam had knowledge. Here is a field of knowledge. He knew you could not curse Israel. You knew that he knew that you could not enchant, put an enchantment on Israel. He knew that God had blessed Israel, that God had brought them out of Egypt, and there was something spiritually powerful about these people. And he told the prince who hired him, you can, I cannot curse them. They are blessed of God. And God is not a man that he could lie. And he gave all this doctrinal information like this field of knowledge, we could say. But paradoxically, 2 Peter chapter 2, Balaam was an evil man. He had the knowledge and the Spirit of God came upon him and he gave the prophecy but he didn't have the understanding. And I was wondering why, and I just wanted to say this. Number one, he didn't organize the knowledge. He didn't know how it goes together. He didn't know what it meant in his life. And number two, he couldn't prioritize the knowledge. He didn't know the importance of it. He could not make it a priority. He could not realize, he did not realize, be submitted to Moses. Be submitted to Israel. Your life will change, Balaam. You are right in your information, but you don't know what you're saying. Let me put it this way. This is what it means. Here are the Pharisees with their knowledge but they did not really know what it was that they were saying or what it meant. And Christ said to them that you cannot even hear what I am saying because there's something radically wrong. And I would say that we have the same thing in our Christianity. We have knowledge, but the gift that we have is that we are able to organize what we know and prioritize, we're able to say, this is important. I get it. I understand it. I realize what it means. I, I hear the spirit in it. It is a high priority. I know what it is that we are saying. We are talking about heaven and about hell. We're talking about prayer, about wisdom, about faith, about love, and about forgiveness. But notice something, and I don't want to complicate the message, but just think about it. The world is, it seems, as much as we are learning and we have a field of knowledge, there is a lack of understanding what we know. Example, this is maybe funny, or example, my sexuality. Am I a man? Yes, I'm a man, but I feel like I'm a woman. What? <laughs> what? I'm a man, but no, I'm a woman. And to think that our leadership is listening to that kind of garbage, to think that our professors and politicians and judges and lawmakers are being led by such foolishness, where we all have the same about amount of knowledge and the same knowledge, but we are not able to organize it and prioritize it and understand what it is that we are really saying. The Jews did it with Christ. Balaam did it with Israel. It is repeated to today in the church. It is amazing when there is a church 
and they have the Bible, and they say, yes, we have the Bible, but we've got other things that are very critical and very important. Yes, we have people, but look at the people. Look deeply inside. They are hurting and wounded. We must go into psychology and understand it and draw it out. We must care for people and, and identify and, and work with it. And we say, be very careful because you may have the knowledge, but this may need to be covered up so that we could find the depths of grace, the reality of our new identity, and not know any man after the flesh, not even Christ after the flesh, not even ourselves after the flesh. We want to know the reality, the goodness of God. I had fainted unless I had seen the goodness of God in the land of the living. Wow. Now I have an answer for a thing that happened to me more than probably 30 years ago. It's a funny little story. I want to finish up here. I was in Boston, walking in the streets in Boston. I don't remember the occasion, but by myself. And I had to go to the bathroom. Uh, so I, I'm looking around, and I'm going by these tall buildings, and I go, that building is so tall, there's got to be a bathroom in there. <laughs> so I go into that building, and I, I don't know where to go. I'm looking for a bathroom, so I get on the elevator. I go up, you know, so many floors. I get off, and I see men. I go right in. So I go into one of the stalls, and as I am there, I look down, and I see under the next stall, high heels. <laughs> and I'm thinking, where am I? <laughs> what happened? Am I going to get arrested in a few minutes? <laughs> Did anybody see me come in here? So I'm <laughs> as quiet as I can be. And I'm in there, and then I just, I'm just thinking, Lord, I don't know if she's wrong or I'm wrong, but we, somebody's wrong in this picture. So I get, I get out, I go out, I look at the door, it says women. So I get on the elevator, and I'm out of there, I'm gone. I disappear. But now I have, if it happens again, I know what to say. I look like a man, but I'm a woman. <laughs> okay. Would you pray with me, please? <laughs> okay, we got the point, all right, all right, all right, so, hey, wow, Proverbs 16, 23, how about this one, Proverbs 16, 25, there is a way that seems right unto a man, there is a way that seems right unto a man, and that in that case is, I'm a woman, but the end thereof is death. There's a way for Balaam, and he thinks he knows, but he's wrong. And the Pharisees at the time of Christ. And in our fellowship, there are a lot of people that uh, I would say they do not understand, or they, have, they, have, uh, they are uh, deciding to go away where they want to discover themselves and discover life. And we say, enough of it. We have been there, we have done it, we are interested in finding the one and only, the way, the truth, the life. We want to find Christ. And I am so happy for the people that have come far to come and be here. And I know that God will richly bless us, richly visit us. 
We'll be richer for it, better for it. We'll have it organized, prioritized, and we'll say, my way is not the way, God's way is the way. This is how I will live, this is how I think. This is what is good, this is what is needed. And let's bring healing to the nations. Okay? Pray with me, please. you're here today and you do not have Jesus Christ as your Savior, we are introducing to him, him to you. We are saying to you, you need him. Oh, he will pull you up. He will draw you on. He will guide you in life. He will love you. He will care for you. He will speak to you. He will heal you. He will answer you. He will comfort you. He will show you the way, and he will help you. Say to Christ, I believe. I believe. I want you, Jesus, in my life. Raise your hand. Anyone here today, tonight in the auditorium, just put up your hand and say yes to Jesus. On the Internet, please say yes to Jesus. Here all week long, yes. Oh, oh Lord, bring and speak and draw us that we would discover you in our marriage, discover you in our church, discover you in our everyday life, to discover you and to know you. Thank you for the listening ears, the hearts of faith. Thank you, God. In Jesus' name, amen.